My name is Kimberly Beam Holmes, and I'm the CEO of Marriage Helper. And today I am reacting to when Ross and Rachel take a break on Friends. Here we go. Look, um, about what happened earlier. No, well, I, I completely understand you were you were stressed. I was going to give you a chance to apologize to me. For what? For letting you throw me out of your office? You had no right coming down to my office, Ross. You do not bring a picnic basket to somebody's work unless maybe they were a park ranger. <laughs> <laughs> so. I think I remember what happened right before this. Um, she, like, he's worried that she's going to cheat on him, right? So he's, like, showing up. And that's the thing. I Like, in a healthy relationship, a guy doing that, bringing a picnic basket to a girl's work, like, if my husband did that today, I'd be like, this is the best thing ever. Bring wine. But uh, because their relationship is stressed and she can tell that he's jealous – she sees this. One of the things we talk about marriage helper is push behaviors. And so she's seeing this as a push behavior, but the exact same behavior in a healthy relationship could actually be seen as a pull behavior. Yeah, well, excuse me for wanting to be with my girlfriend on our anniversary. Boy, what an ass am I. <laughs> I forgot it was their anniversary. Yeah, that still she's mad and her perception, like why she's mad should matter to him. I told you I didn't have the time. Yeah, well, you never have the time. I mean, I don't feel like I even have a girlfriend anymore, Rachel. Oh, Ross, what do you want from me? You don't want me, don't want me to quit my job so you can feel like you have a girlfriend? No, but it would be nice if you'd realize that it's just a job. Just a job? Yes. Ross, do you realize this is the first time in my life I'm doing something I actually care about? This is the first time in my life I'm doing something that I'm actually good at? I mean, if you don't get that... Okay, I get that, okay? I get that big time, and I'm happy for you, but I'm tired of having a relationship with your answering machine, okay? I don't know what to do anymore. Well, neither do I. Is this about Mark? <gasps> oh, my God. Okay, it's not. It's oh, my God. <laughs> I cannot keep having the same fight over and over again, Ross. No, you're, you're, you're making this too hard. Oh, I'm, I'm making this too hard. Okay, what do you want me to do? I don't know. I don't know. Look... Oh, maybe we should just take a break. Okay, okay, fine. You're right. Let's uh, let's take a break. Let's cool off, okay? Let's get some frozen yogurt or something. No. A break from us. One of the things that you have to remember as well is that when the whole series started, Rachel has no idea what she's doing with her life. And she's a waitress and she's barely making any money. And so for her, this is a big deal. The fact that she's landed such an amazing job and she's putting her heart and soul in it matters a lot to her. And probably part of what she is thinking and feeling as Ross is becoming increasingly more possessive and whiny is like, look at what she's done. Look at what work she's put in to where she is. And she does not feel like he is proud of her or appreciative of the work she's done or like sees her for the amazing accomplishments that she has had so far. Meanwhile, he's like PhD paleontologist, right? Which like, who knows really what he does, but he's really esteemed and has this, like all of these things he's worked for. And she probably feels a bit less than. She's worked really hard to get where she is. And all of a sudden, he wants her whole world to be about him. So his core issue here is, I miss you. I want to spend time with you. Her core issue here is, I don't feel like you are acknowledging the what where I've gotten to in my life. Like, I don't feel appreciated by you. At the core of it all, we know that ends, end of relationships occur because people do not feel liked, loved, or respected. Rachel does not feel respected. Ross does not feel loved. That's where their core issues are here. So what we've just seen happen is Rachel proposed the idea that maybe they should take a break, and Ross walked out. They never really made a final decision. 
if we're going to be real. But after Ross left, as the series continues, we see that he goes to a nightclub. He sees this girl from the copy copy shop that he and the other guys had thought was really attractive, ends up sleeping with her that night. Rachel, the next morning, comes to Ross's apartment and is so apologetic. I want to make this work. I'm sorry for what happened last night, not knowing that Ross had just slept with another girl and she's still in the apartment. Ross was going to try and cover this up. She ends up finding out. And that's where we're picking up. Rachel, come on, talk to me, please. Hey, you, I can't even look at you right now. What? Nothing, nothing. <laughs> Matthew Barry. Everything was okay. What, what are they talking about? Rachel, yeah, well, just get away no, from it me. It was a mistake. I made a mistake, okay? A mistake? What were you trying to put it in? Her purse? <laughs> where? Where did he put it? Exactly. Exactly. Lots of times when people have affairs, they say they made a mistake. It's a mistake to hit the wrong key on your keyboard. It is doing the wrong thing when you have an affair and sleep with another person. It's not a mistake. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> Ross, you had sex with another woman. Oh, my God. Oh, God, I knew something had to be wrong because my fingernails did not grow at all yesterday. <laughs> Yeah, well, I guess they had a fight and he got drunk. <gasps> you guys knew about that and you didn't tell us? He has sex and we get hit in our heads. <laughs> you know what? I want you to leave. Get out of here. Just no, get out no, now. No, uh, no, I want to stay. I want to talk about this. Okay. All right. How was she? Uh-oh. <laughs> what? Was she good? Don't answer that. Don't answer <laughs> She was awful. She was horrible. not good. Not good. Not good. Compared to you. She, she was different. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> good. Different. It's so hard to watch. It's so hard to watch. Good. Different. Nobody likes change. <laughs> Should we do something? Yeah, never cheat on Rachel. Okay, in all seriousness, this is something that happens a lot when people have affairs. The person who finds out about it, they have questions. They want to know things. They have questions like, was she good? Where were you? How many times? Whatever it is. And answering those questions, um, as we see here, is not always the smartest thing to do. And it's not because you want to hide something from the other person, but because it can paint a visual in the other person's head that it's going to be very difficult for them to get over. So we have ways at Marriage Helper that we help people uh, avoid saying things like she was different and then subsequently getting hit by a book. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. I, w I was disgusted with myself, and then this morning I was so I was, I was so upset, and then I got your message, and I was so happy, and all I wanted was to get her out of my apartment as fast as whoa, possible. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. What time did your little friend leave? Uh. <laughs> oh Don't God. lie. She was there. She was still there. She was in there when I was in there? Important thing is, she meant she meant nothing to me. And yet she was worth jeopardizing our relationship. Look, I didn't think there was a relationship to jeopardize. I thought we were broken up. We were on a break. That, for all I knew, could last forever. That, to me, is a break up. Okay, whether or not they were on a break, broken up, whatever. The fact that Ross immediately went and slept with another person. Of course, to Rachel is going to feel like their relationship didn't matter to him because you should be grieving, right? Like if you're sad about the fact that you could be broken up, that you're never going to be back together again, then there should be a process of grief, of processing, of all of those things. But instead, this is how Ross responded. This is what he did. And so, you know, 
if we didn't love Ross in Friends, then if this was our friend, Rachel, and this crazy guy had done, had done this to her, of course we would say, don't take him back. Like that shows you more about his character and about who he is than a lot of other things could, especially because they aren't married yet. Now, here's the other thing though. People do make stupid decisions, not mistakes, stupid decisions. And they can do things that they will absolutely regret. But a huge part, just like Ross dug himself into such a huge hole here because a huge part wasn't just that he slept with another person. It's that as we're about to see, he continued to try and cover it up. He wasn't man enough to go to Rachel and tell her the truth. And so the betrayal didn't just happen when he slept with her. It happened with the continued infractions of him trying to cover it up. You think you're going to get out of this on a technicality? Look, I'm not trying to get out of anything, okay? I thought our relationship was dead. Well, you sure had. And also, like, as much as he loved Rachel, why would he just let her go that easily? If he thought their relationship was dead, like, he's fought for her really hard over the years, and now he's just going to totally give it up? A hell of a time at the wake. And to have to hear about it from Gunther. Come on, like I wanted him to tell you, I ran all over the place trying to make sure that didn't happen. Oh, that is so... Which also makes it worse because now everyone knows that this has happened to her. Sweet. Terrible. I think I'm falling in love with you all over again. You know what? I think we can go out there. I mean, they have more important things to worry about. Yeah, we'll be fine. Look, Rachel, I wanted to tell you. I thought I should. I, I did. And then Chandler and Joey convinced me not to. <laughs> this is a perfect example of why you should not take relationship advice from people in your life who've never had a long-term committed relationship. Come on, Rachel. Tell me what you're thinking. I'm thinking... I'm gonna order a pizza. Order a pizza like, I forgive you? <laughs> hey, could I, could I get in on that? Cause I'm kinda hungry myself. Fine. Hi, yes, I'd like to order a large pizza. No anchovies. With uh, extra anchovies? <laughs> it's okay, I'll just pick them off. Yeah, and could you please chop some up and just put it right there in the sauce? You can have the last piece if you want. Well, I should think so. You slept with someone. So there's nothing productive about them just like locking themselves in a room and Ross waiting for Rachel to forgive him. Forgiveness is absolutely a process. And the more that someone feels like forgiveness is being demanded, like Rachel is likely feeling that Ross is just demanding that he forgive, that she forgives him so that they can move on. Does she need to forgive him? Yes, for her own benefit, not for his. And she's processing things and like being locked in a room with him and him not leaving. Uh, I don't even know if he's apologized yet. Has he apologized? Like, I don't know that Rachel truly believes, and this is a crucial part of a person asking for forgiveness. I don't know that Rachel truly believes that he has understood the weight and magnitude of what he has done and expressed that to her, not in a self-loathing way, but in a way of like, I have done something horrible and you, I don't deserve your forgiveness, but if you could find it in your heart, I am sorry. And I will absolutely do what it takes to earn back your forgiveness. That's the process that needs to happen here. Forgiveness is not just given overnight and it's not given just because the other person demands it. It's a process that the forgiver, Rachel in this case, needs to go through. And yes, she should forgive for her own sake. But if Ross wants to earn back trust, then he's going to have to be willing to go through a process of that. It's not just going to be like fixed overnight and then right back into their relationship. It's not how it works. Now you're not even talking to me? Look, Rachel, I, I'm sorry. 
okay? I'm sorry, I was out of my mind. I thought I'd lost you, I didn't know what to do. Come on, come on, how insane must I have been to do something like this? Huh? I, I don't cheat, right? I, that's not me, I'm not Joey. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> It's three in the morning. They don't know that I've come home yet. You notice how neither one of them are wondering where I am? Yeah, you know, people can be so self-involved. Yeah. You know what? You know what? I'm not, I'm not the one that wanted that, that break, okay? You're the one that bailed on us. Okay, so he went from forgiving to blaming. This is not... This is not how forgiveness works. You're the one that, that ran the moment things got just a little rough. That's... That's what? That is neither here nor there. Okay, well, here we are. Now we're in a tough spot again, Rach. What do you want to do? How do you want to handle it, huh? Do you want to fight for us, or do you want to bail? Look, I... I did a terrible, stupid, stupid thing. Okay? And I'm sorry. I wish I could take it back, but I can't. I just can't see us throwing away something we know is so damn good. Rachel, I love you so much. Okay, okay. This morning you said there was nothing so big that we couldn't work past it together. No, what the hell did I know? Look, look, there's got to be a way we can work past this, okay? I can't imagine, I can't imagine my life without you, you know, without... Without these arms. <laughs> And your face and this heart, your good heart, right? And, and... No, I can't. You're a totally different person to me now. I used to think of you as somebody that would never, ever hurt me, ever. God, and now I just can't stop picturing you with her. I can't. It doesn't matter what you say or what you do, Ross. It's just changed everything. This can't be it. Then how come it is? So Rachel made some pretty big statements and pretty big decisions in the middle of her hurt and in the middle of her grief. And at the end of it, what they went through is a very typical reaction of both parties when someone is caught in the middle of an affair, especially in a marriage. And the thing is, what Rachel said at the end is absolutely understandably how she felt. I can't imagine you doing this. I always viewed you as someone who would never hurt me, but you have. Now, the thing is, Rachel made a statement in that moment, not necessarily a decision, because as the series plays out, we see them come back together. But she made a statement of, I can't ever picture myself being with you again. I can't imagine making this work. And that is how a lot of people feel when they found out that their spouse has had an affair and they found out that their spouse has cheated. What we have seen in the work that we've done at Marriage Helper is that an affair is an incredibly hard thing to go through for both people, but especially for the person who's been hurt by the affair. But you really can rebuild trust. You really can work through it and fall in love again and be better than you were before. Ross and Rachel could have gone through a process if we had had them at Marriage Helper, I can tell you, we would have fixed it. We would have made it work. But they didn't have good outside counsel. They didn't know how to approach the situation. And so it can make it hard. There's a lot of emotions in that. Ross was doing a whole lot of pushes in his conversation with Rachel of like demanding that she take him back, begging, crying, all of the things that just continued to push Rachel a bit further away. And she needed help in processing her emotions too. If you've enjoyed this reaction video, then please leave a comment. Let us know. Let us know what other scenes in Friends or other things you would like to see us review and react to. Be sure that you like and subscribe and follow our channel on Marriage Helper here on YouTube as well so that you can be in the know every time we release new videos and new content, which happens pretty often. And remember, there is always hope.